Welcome uh, grade 11s and 12s to probability. All right, so question one is a Venn diagram question taken from a platinum textbook. Let's look at the information. We're told that a total of 50 candidates are interviewed. 21 of these candidates have leadership qualities. 28 have experience. Eight of them have professional skills. Ten of these candidates have none of these qualities. Nine candidates have leadership qualities and experience. Five have professional skills and experience. And six have professional skills and leadership qualities. And we have to complete the Venn diagram, meaning we need to take all of this information and put it into the diagram. So let's uh, do that. Okay, so first of all, we are told that there's a total of 50 candidates that are being interviewed. So the total we always want to put uh, on the top corner there. So there's 50 uh, candidates that are being interviewed. Now, before we start putting values into the circle, we always go to the center, to the intersection. You always start your Venn diagram at the intersection. So at the intersection, we would have the right candidate. This candidate will have all three qualities. So they would have professional skills, leadership qualities, and experience. So do we have uh, information on this right candidate on the intersection? No. If you read the information, the information does not tell us the number of candidates uh, who have all three qualities. So we will just put X at the intersection because we do not know how many candidates have all three qualities. Okay, but we know that 21 of them have leadership qualities. So there's 21 leadership qualities, 28 have experience, Eight have professional skills. Ten have none of these qualities. So ten candidates do not have any of these three qualities, so they do not fit into the circles. We'll just put them at the bottom corner there. Ten candidates with none of these qualities. Nine candidates with leadership qualities and experience. Leadership qualities and experience. So there are nine of those candidates. Of course, you need to subtract the intersection. Five have professional skills and experience. So they have professional skills and they also have experience. And there are five of those candidates. Six with professional skills and leadership qualities. So of course, six minus the intersection. So that's how uh, you would complete your Venn diagram. And of course, let's go to the second part of the question. All right, so in the second part of this question, we have to determine the number of interviewees who were the right candidates for this job. So, they're not, so we're looking for the intersection. So we're basically uh, trying to solve for x. All right, because remember the intersection was X because we didn't know the right candidate. So we're looking for the number of these candidates uh, who are the right candidates who've got all three qualities. So we basically need to solve for X. So let's do that. All right, so in solving for X, we basically uh, want to add all the given uh, of the given information and equate it to the total of the candidates, which is 50. And we can start anyway. So let's start with eight. So we have eight plus six minus X plus X plus five minus X plus 21 plus 
9 minus x plus 28 plus 10 and all of these should equal to 50 because there were 50 candidates in total. Now we can start to simplify. Let's start with the x's. Of course, these two will cancel. And now we are left with minus x and minus x. So if we add those uh, negative x's, we get negative 2x. And now let's go to uh, the numbers. So 8 plus 6 is 14. 14 plus 5 is 19. 19 plus 21 is 40. 40 plus 9 is 49. And 49 plus 28 is 68. 68 plus 10 is 78. And of course, all of this is equal to 30. All right, so we've got 14. So 14 candidates are the right candidates. So, uh, so that is the answer. The answer is equal to 14 candidates have all three quantities. So 14 candidates. Okay, so let's go to the next question. Okay, so question two is the contingency table question. Um, let's look at the example. Grade 12 learners at a particular school were asked if they would attend a metric ball this year. The responses are recorded below. Okay, and of course, some of the information is missing and uh, we need to complete this information. All right, so where would we start to complete this information? All right, we know that um, this number plus 130 will give us 235. So what is the value here? And of course, that value will be 105. So 105 plus 130 will give us 235. And then we can complete across. We know that 100 plus this value will give us 105. So that value must be 5. And again, we can complete down. We know that 5 plus this value will give us 18, so that value must be 13. And again, we can complete across. We know that this value plus 13 will give us 130. So if we take 130 and we minus 13, we get 117. So 117 plus 13 will give us uh, 130. Finally, we add downwards 100 plus uh, 117 will give us 217. So that is basically how we complete the table. All right, so now that we've completed the table, we can answer some questions um, based on the information that we had just completed in the previous question. All right, so 2.2, calculate the probability that a boy at the school will attend the metric ball. All right, so um, we are looking for the probability that we have a boy and they will attend. Okay, and uh, this is easy. All right, those are boys and that is that value over there, boys that will attend, there are 100 boys that will attend. So that will be 100 over the total of everyone, which is 235. So our probability, if you go to your calculator to simplify, will be 100 divided by 235. 
and of course it simplifies to 20 over 47 and of course if we wanted to write this probability as a percentage you could just multiply it by 100 but I will leave it as a fraction let's go to the next question 2.3 calculate the probability that a student will not attend the metric ball given that it's a goal so now this is a conditional probability question and just to remind you uh, the formula for conditional probability so the formula is if you are looking for the probability that a will happen given that b has happened so this probability will be a and b happening together over b all right so that is the formula that we use for conditional probability so let us apply it here okay so the probability that a student will not attend so we're looking for the probability that a student will not attend will not attend a metric ball given that it's a goal and of course the formula for this would be uh, not attend and go over go so that would be the conditional probability formula all right so if we put numbers into this formula so the probability that a student will not attend given that it's a goal is the probability that uh, it happened the two will happen together will not attend and a goal not attend uh, and a goal is that section there go not attend or not attend and a goal so it's 13 over the probability of being a goal all right so how many goals we know we've got 130 girls so that is the conditional probability and if you go to your calculator we can simplify this 13 over 130 simplifies to 1 over 10 and of course if you wanted to write it as a, a percentage you would just multiply it by 100 but uh, once again i will leave it as a fraction all right so the final question uh, is asking for the probability of being a girl and attending the metric ball is being a girl and attending the metric ball independent events so that's the question you need to check uh, if being a girl and attending the metric ball are independent events and we of course we know how to check for independent events to check if in uh, two events are independent the probability of those events happening together will equal to the probability of one event multiplied by the probability of the other event so for our purposes the probability of being a girl and attending the trick ball so we're looking for the probability of being a girl and attending all right so we know that if these are independent events then the probability of being a girl and attending will equal to the probability of being a girl multiplied by the probability of attending now we know in this formula if the left hand side is equal to the right hand side then we can say that these events are independent so what is the probability the left hand side the probability of being a girl and attending 
girl attending is 117. So the probability of being a girl and attending will be 117 over 235, the total. So on the right hand side, we're looking for the probability of being a girl and we know there are 130 girls. So the probability of being a girl, this part of the right hand side will be 130 over 235. Multiply by the probability of attending. So how many will attend? And we know 217 will attend. Over the total again. So now we simplify the right hand side to see if it will be equal to the left hand side. So we've got 130. Just need to delete this five. And this equals to 5,642 over 11,045. So if we want to check if these two sides are equal, we can simplify to decimal. If we do that, we get 0, 0,51. Let's also check the left-hand side. Simplify the left-hand side also to a decimal. The left-hand side is 117 over simplified to a decimal you'll see that we get 0 comma 50 and of course as you can see the left hand side is not equal to the right hand side so these events are, are definitely not independent remember if they are independent then the left hand side will equal to the right hand side Okay, thank you grade 11s and 12s and of course if you like this video then like it.